Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to be taking a look at a keyboard from Sahara Gaming. This is the R20, 10 keyless. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Sahara Gaming R20. This is a 10 keyless keyboard, RGB. I'll be honest with you, this is one that I wasn't particularly looking forward to. I was slightly hesitant. I thought to myself, oh, it's another RGB keyboard. This particular one is in the kind of 50 pound mark. And I'm thinking there's a lot of competition on the market at the moment. So this needs to be pretty decent in order for it to make any impact on the market whatsoever. But fortunately, spoiler alert, I've actually had this out of the box and I've used it a little bit. And it does have some of those key features that makes it a real contender. So first of all, let's go around the packaging, then we'll unbox it, then we'll give you some demonstrations of it in use, both the lighting and the keys, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. So first of all, pretty much usual deal from Sahara, nice packaging, shows you the model on the front, got the R20 logo, addressable RGB, which is something I'm always glad to see, got a Sahara Gaming logo on the front there also. Uh, moving around to the side, so Sahara Gaming logo on that side, some more information on this side and also some of the color options and some of the features, which we'll go into a little bit later. Sahara Gaming logo on there and some description there. So Sahara Gaming R20, wired RGB backlit macro 10 keyless mechanical keyboard. I think that pretty much sums it up. On the back, we've got this really nice handy layout of what all the lighting effects are and also the shortcut keys. Also, if you do want to, you can download a piece of software from Sahara Gaming and the links are on the board and I'll put them in the video description as well so you can check out for yourself. But actually the software that runs with this keyboard is actually unusually extremely good, which is a rare thing these days with RGB keyboards. So definitely something worth checking out a little bit later. So let's quickly run through some of the specifications. So uh, the dimensions are 359 by 135 by 38 millimeters got a weight of around about 760 grams and a cord length of 180 centimeters. Keycap materials, ABS, and they're double shot for uh, ANSI UK layout. Got laser markings as well for the ISO layout. Interface is USB, and it's using the Otomu brown switches. For those of you who don't know who Otomu are, they actually make really, really good replicas of the Cherry MX brown switches. And if you put the two side by side, for me personally, it's really difficult to tell the difference between them. But there is a cost saving involved, so obviously you can pick up the keyboard for a little bit less than you would than its Cherry Switch Brethren. So lighting modes, we've got 14 different lighting modes which are built in in the hardware on the keyboard, and also there's extra modes which are available in the software, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. We've also got a uh, full N key rollover, and also we've got stabilizers which are Cherry plate mounted. So that pretty much sums that up. Let's take out the box and see what we get. So in the packaging, as you can see, we've got the keyboard itself and uh, Definitely missing a number pad over here. In these sections here, we have a switch puller. We also have a keycap puller. And on the other side here, we have got the lovely braided USB cable, which again is about 180 centimeters long. But we'll have a look at that shortly. There's also a owner's manual. So not only have you got all the key instructions on the back of the box. You've also got this uh, pretty in-depth user guide as well. And also you've got the software as well if you can't be bothered to read any of that stuff. So there is the keyboard itself. And as you can see, it's got the nice compact size, 10 keyless. So we're missing what would be the number pad on the side here. So for gamers, this generally tends to be a little bit more comfortable in use. And also for typists, or if you're limited on space, this is really, really handy. It does save you a considerable amount of space, but doesn't give up any real features. So the keyboard itself is actually really nice, quite lightweight. On the bottom, we've got rubberized feet to keep everything nice and stable. And actually it was nice to see that you've got these actually double mounted rubber feet at the front and double mounted at the back as well. So, so if you have the stabilizing feet raised up, then those are fully rubber coated. And because of the angle the keyboard is on, it then uses these front mounted rubbers. When you put the keys down flat, then you use the top mounted rubbers. Kind of Unusual to see, but it, it works. So you've got eight individual rubberized feet there, four for each type of uh, layout, so flat or raised. And actually in the raised position, I do find this to have a very, very nice angle. The rake is really nice. Just feels really natural and really easy to use. And we'll do a quick keyboard uh, sign test. So 
So you get the general idea, they sound pretty much identical to Cherry MX Browns, and I really like it. The, the feedback is really good. You don't get that kind of reverberation from any of the uh, sort of mechanical parts of the keyboard. Just really feels really nice, really sturdy. And even with it fully flat, the sound profile does change a little bit. But still feels absolutely wonderful. Now, on the bottom of the keyboard, going back to that, we've also got this area for cable management. So you can put the cable management just push it in through there, or you can take it through the sides, either side, and you've got cable outlets on both points there, which is uh, quite a nice thing to see, especially if you like keeping your desktop nice and clean and tidy. Now, what you can do as well, you can obviously, because it is a mechanical keyboard, you can remove all the switches effectively. So all you need to do is you can take off one of your keycaps. Now, you can use, obviously, the keycap puller if you wanted to use that, if you want to, uh, but then you can take the switches out. So the switches are actually relatively easy to get out but they're not the sort of switches that actually just fall out. Do have to give them a little bit of a wiggle. And there we go. There is one of the Otimu Brown switches. And as you can see, nice little switch, easy to replace. So if you wanted to, you could replace these with reds, blues, silent reds, linears, whatever it is you choose to do. So plenty of flexibility. I'm not too sure about if you can change these with genuine MX switches. I gotta be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure, but maybe someone let us know in the comments section below. So removable key switches, that is actually one of the things which did kind of draw me into it a little bit more. Some of the keyboards we see have actually got soldered key switches, so if one of them breaks or gets damaged, which I have actually done with one of my Rio Toro keyboards, where unfortunately I did damage a switch and I did have to desolder it, which is not the end of the world. It can be done, but it is rather fiddly and certainly not as easy as just being able to pull a switch and replace it. Unfortunately, we don't have any replacement switches included in the box, which would have been a really nice gesture. So if you do need a new switch, you're gonna to have to go and buy them. But again, not really a deal breaker. So onto the deck itself, the keyboard deck. Now for me, the actual font of the keyboard is fantastic. I really do like it. It's really nice, really sharp, really clear. It's almost like those motorway signs that you see. They're just so clear, even from a distance, you can tell exactly what they say, which is why they designed the fonts that way. And it seems that's what Sahara have done with this keyboard font. It's so clear and crisp, it just, yeah, it generally is a joy to type on. You do find some keyboards, they have a kind of almost like a, a futuristic font to them where they have kind of indentations or bits missing of the font, which for me ruins it, especially when you get to a certain point of your age and your eyesight starts failing a little bit, you are really super thankful for a really nice clear font on your keyboard. Now, speaking of clear fonts on the keyboard, all the extra functions on the keys are actually laid out on them. So the function keys also serve as media keys. So you've got play, pause, rewind, all that kind of stuff. Also, you've got your things like for opening emails, uh, calculator, all those sorts of buttons. Just a simple thing of pressing the function key and also the F key and toggle between them, etc. as you would normally. So no real surprises there. And pretty much everything that you'd have on a regular keyboard you've got on here is just a little bit smaller. Now the deck itself, the top deck of the keyboard, it does feel as if it's metal, but it isn't magnetic. So maybe it's some sort of aluminium. It's got like a brushed aluminium look to it. It does feel a little bit colder than the rest of it, so I don't think it is plastic, but again, it's fooled me if it is. It appears to be metal. I'm not sure what metal it is, but certainly it does look nice. And with that kind of grain effect in the metal, yeah, looks pretty premium. So let's plug this thing in and we'll go through the software and check out some of the RGB features. Now the cable itself, like I said, 1.8 meters long, and you've got this gold-plated USB connection. And when you plug it in, straight away, you get your RGB lighting come up. Now it does remember whichever you've set it to previously, so if uh, you don't install the software and you just set your keyboard to your own preferences, then it will remember those. One nice feature of this, which I noticed already, is if you press the function button, the actual keys which are usable with the function button actually change color so you know which ones they are. So as you can hopefully see, the menu button, the arrow keys, the function keys over here, and the top row of function keys are all illuminated, as is the Windows key and the Y key. Now you can actually also set different macros, so you can set your macros on the Y, U, I, O, and P keys. So five individual macros you can program into the keyboard. Again, you can do that with or without the software. All the instructions for that are actually on the box and in the leaflet. But overall, what do you think? I think it looks really, really nice. The RGB isn't blinding, but certainly bright enough. The keycaps show up excellent. The, uh, the lighting comes through really nicely. Double shot keys always do really well in that area. And yeah, it just looks really nice. The RGB flow is very smooth. It doesn't have that horrible kind of stepping to it, even at the slower speeds where 
Traditionally, with cheaper keyboards, you see that kind of horrible stepping effect as it went through the colors. But this seems to have a really nice flow to it. But anyway, that's enough of that. Let's go have a look into the software and go through some of the lighting modes. So this is the uh, Sahara Gaming website, and as you can see, this is Sahara Gaming R20 wired RGB macro backlit 10 keyless mechanical keyboard. And you can go through all the information and look at other stuff in there if you want to, all the specifications, etc., as we discussed. But at the bottom, if you want to get the software because it's not included in the box, you can choose to download the software from here. And also, if you want an additional user manual, you can just click on there and download the user manual as a PDF. Now, I've actually downloaded the software and installed it already, so we don't really need to look at that. And we've got this little S logo or Sahara Gaming, the keyboard engine in the bottom here. Now, actually, while we're here, I'll quickly look on the Amazon site. So this is the Amazon listing here in the UK for this keyboard. And currently you can see it's for $54.99 plus $3.99 delivery. So it's getting close to £60. It is a little bit on the higher tier of pricing, if I'm completely honest with you. There are other keyboards like the K88, etc., which are around about a similar price. Some of the Red Dragon keyboards, that sort of thing, all around a very, very similar price point. But again, the software on this is really good, which we'll take a look at shortly. The removable switches is a feature you rarely get on the very, very cheap keyboards. And also the font. For me, the font is actually worth its weight in gold. To be able to actually see the keys properly and not give myself some kind of uh, eye strain trying to see them is brilliant. And if you're going to be using it for extended periods or in slightly dimmer lighting where the keys need to be seen accurately, then this is going to be fantastic for you. But anyway, so that's the price currently as uh, we are here. This is the 14th of June 2020, so obviously the price may fluctuate if you're watching this a little bit later than the record date. So going into the gaming software itself, so you've got various sections here. So you've got the customized section where you can customize keys and have key assignments, etc. Uh, you can set up all signs of active profiles. There's eight profiles you can choose from and you can add them, edit them, etc., etc. But we're not going to get too in depth with that macros you've also got so you can add or import macros if you've already got macros you can do that but the most important one for me is actually the lighting section so this is the lighting section so at the moment it's given a reproduction of what is actually showing on the keyboard itself and this current effect is called streamer now you can speed up and slow down these effects so if we change it to full speed so that is on the full speed also you can change the direction so move the direction of the arrows or the lighting rather so you can have bands of lighting, various things, and obviously brightness as well. So you can, if you want to, if you're in a slightly less bright room, you can put the brightness right down. Or obviously, if you want to, you can just turn it right the way down to the very bottom. Or you can press the function key and this one. Function key and end, which makes sense, and it turns off the lighting altogether. So let's put that back on, function key and page down, turns it back on. So various ways of doing it, you can control it from the keyboard. Like I said, this is for me is actually easier to do it in the software. I quite kind of like the software. One nice feature I did notice on this actually in this first section is there's a bit down here, switch off all lighting when the display is off. And this is something which I've actually wanted on keyboards and mice for a long, long time, especially RGB, because the last thing you want is when your monitor goes to sleep or you put it to standby or whatever, is for the RGB puke to carry on going while you're trying to sleep or just basically while the screen's off, you don't want to have this distraction. So this is designed so that when your screensaver kicks in and all turns off, then also the keyboard will after a few seconds, which is brilliant. And as soon as you press the keyboard or move the mouse and the screen comes on, the keyboard comes back on immediately and all the lights work as they would normally, which is great. So let's have a look at some of the effects. So what we've got is there's a ton of effects here. So we've got the static effect at the top. So that's just your plain color. And you can turn the speeds right down again. So. This is a bit of a weird one because it says static, but it's not technically static unless that one stops it altogether, which I don't think it does. I think it'll still carry on. Yeah, so it is still slowly changing color. So although it says static, it's not. It's more like a, a color flow, but anyway, there you go. Uh, you've got the breathing one, so it just breathes through the colors as you're uh, pretty much used to seeing on some of the other keyboards over the years, a little bit of an old fashioned one. Uh, streamer, as we said, so that is the RGB unicorn puke. Got rain one which is uh, kind of nice, it's a little bit fast, so we'll slow that right down. And yeah, that's quite a nice one. A bit different. So also you've got a uh, horse race lamp, which is a little bit on the weird side. I kind of like that. I haven't seen this before, so that, I kind of like that. It's a nice, nice look. And again, you can change the uh, direction, that sort of stuff. 
go into Twinkling Stars. So that is kind of almost like a rain effect as well, actually, the Twinkling Stars. And you've got Reactive, so when you press a key, you get various light effects come up. Water Drop, which is a similar sort of thing. So when you press a key, you get that kind of spread out from the key you've pressed. And we've got the Cross. So when you press something, you get the Cross effect. So Cross horizontally, horizontally and vertically. There's also Ripple, which you can speed up or slow down. Kind of thing we're used to seeing, but it's, uh, it's working out what the names are for each one. Uh, there's another Ripple there. It's like a bigger spread. And you've got Aurora. Similar sort of principle. Uh, heat map is actually quite an interesting one. So this one is blue for cold. And as you speed up your type in, it goes to red eventually. It's just a little bit different. I've not seen that before. Uh, custom one is you can set it. So there's templates for various games and layouts. So say for instance, you're into um, global offensive, then you can set that, click on apply and that basically highlights your keys that are most likely to be used in Global Offensive, which is again, quite nice for it to be included straight out. And then we've got our rain effect. Again, it's a little bit on the fast side, but quite a nice effect. If you like your RGB effects, I think that's one you'll be quite happy with. Although saying that, I think most people who go for an RGB keyboard are probably gonna end up, as I generally do myself, just with the, uh, the Unicorn Puke, which we all know and love. And at least with this, it does match in with pretty much most other RGB formats on a PC. Even if it's a static or an older 12 volt RGB, it still actually looks pretty good with this alongside it. So I think that pretty much wraps things up. That is the color effects. You've got the macros you can program, programmable keys. You can choose to use it either hardware mode, so just using the buttons to change everything. And I do really like that thing where you press the control button and then the other buttons that are actually usable in that mode light up. I think that's actually a genius idea. I've not seen that before. And I think it's very, very good. So tons and tons of features, loads of flexibility, both in hardware and in software. Price wise, I think it's pretty much bang on. A little bit cheaper would be fantastic, but then we always like to see things a little bit cheaper. But I think it pretty much is worth what they're asking for, it, especially with those Otomu brain switches. I actually really like the brain switches. They do feel really good to use. And there's a really nice little nice little bump into them so i do enjoy typing on it i do i must admit cherry brains have always been one of my favorites so yeah looks good sounds good price is pretty good there's not really anything i can dislike about it i was hoping there was going to be something that i would really really dislike about this keyboard and really hate but actually i can't have no hate for it so there we go that is the sahara gaming r20 rgb keyboard i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video Thanks for watching.